Hey guys, gamer 34 here. So today I'm back with a video and we're going to be implementing a melee machine. Um, so what this machine is supposed to do is when we give it a certain input, we want it to output a clockwise circle on, an FP on a figure 8, or on, on a 7 sec display. Um, then on a different input we want to give it a counterclockwise circle. And then on a different input again we want to have it do a figure 8. So I'm going to show you guys my state machine, the state diagram, how that works, and then I also will show you a, the VHDL code, and then I will also show you it running on the FPGA. So let's read through this lab and see what it's supposed to do. So it says, design a sequential circuit with more than one input and output. So the outputs are going to be defined by the current state. So if I'm in state 1, it's going to output these two cells. If I'm in state 2, it's going to output these two, for example. State 3 is going to output these three two. And so whatever state you're in is going to decide the output. The input does not decide the output. The input decides what route we're going through those states. So for that, I actually think this is a more. I think a more machine is uh, outputs are based on state, but I, I could be wrong. I, I don't really remember those too well. Um, then it says, design a sequential circuit that can generate a periodic output at a given frequency using a clock divider circuit. So the FPGA has a clock of 100 megahertz. Um, and obviously, if we had this thing clocked at 100 megahertz, we wouldn't be able to see it transition. It would just look like a blur. So for us to actually be able to see that, we wanted, or I wanted like 6 hertz or something like that. So I actually divided the clock, which is 100 megahertz, by 24 bits. So there's a 24-bit counter that I designed, and it would count up. It'll increment every time there's a clock. So 24 bits is something like 100 million or 1 million something like that, so, or like 48 million or something, so it cut down from 100 megahertz to clock down to 6 hertz, so that it would transition about 6 times a second, which is visible. Um, so then it says, this is an example here of what it should look like for the first four states of the figure 8, so there's going to be 8 states in the figure 8, um, and then it tells you the procedure here, how to start it out, and then it says to make sure it pushes to the basis for it. So let's go ahead and see what this should actually look like. in my VHDL code for the animations that you saw previously to this. Um, so we're going to walk through what exactly this does. So here at the beginning we have our libraries that we're going to be using, and then our ports and how we're defining our input and output for the FPGA. So X is going to be a standard logic vector of 1 down to 0, which means it's going to be 2 bits. So if x is equal to, if x has 0, 1, it's going to go clockwise. If it has 1, 0, it's going to go counterclockwise. And if it has 1, 1, it's going to do the figure 8. So that's going to tell us what states to transition to. Seg out is our output, our 7 segment display output. Obviously, it's 6 down to 0, which means it's 7 bits. And that's going to be what uh, segments of the display are on. Then we have our reset, our clock, and our enable. And then these A out, B out, C out, D out things are just to output to LEDs what state I'm in so I could easily see if it was transitioning pro properly. Down here is our architecture type. So the states are state 0 through state 9. So that's 10 different states as you guys saw previously. I'm defining a few signals here. I'm defining current state and next data states. And then I'm defining a temporary signal to hold some data. And I'm defining a counter signal. So we're initializing the counter to zero. Um, so then there's two different process statements. There's a process statement for the reset and the clock, and then there's a process statement for the data in and the current state. So for the reset and clock, if reset is equal to one, then current state gets state zero. So we're just going to tell it, hey, whenever we on asynchronous reset, just go to state zero every time. Then it says, else if, if there's a clock tick event and clock is equal to one, so that says, when the clock pulses and there's a rising edge, that's basically what that means, and 
the enables on, so it's the the uh, the switch on the board is on, allowing the output to go through. Then the counter, which is a type SCD logic vector of unsigned, will get a counter plus one like that. Then if the counter is equal to 24 bits all on, then the segout will get the temporary register. The, and then the current state will proceed to the next state, and then the counter will reset. And then otherwise it will up, count up to here and then do that again. So that's how I'm doing my clock divider circuit. So then down here is our other process statement, and it takes in the value x and the current state. So it says, when state 0, uh, temp gets this, and that's saying a, b. All right, so the way the board works, um, instead of 1s being true, this is inverted, so zeros are true. So it goes, a, uh, the first zero is a, this, or the, the, first, the most significant bit here is a, and then it goes B, C, D, E, F, and the last, least significant bit is G. So as you saw on the state uh, diagram, on the figure, or the seven seg display I made there, I have the, those segments labeled. Um, so it's saying at state zero, I want to output A, B no matter what. But then if I'm getting X as a zero one, then I'm going to state one. Else if, if I'm getting X as a one zero, then I'm going to state five. Else go to state 9. Um, so it's not really searching for 1, 1. It, it'll work on 0, 0 also. But it still works. It's still, it's still fine. And so it's going to output 0 to the A LED, 0 to the B LED, 0 to the C LED, and 0 to the D LED. So it's going to tell me I'm in state 0. State 1 is going to output BC, as you can see by those two zeros. And it, this the cop comment right there also tells you. Um, and then it's saying that the next state gets state 2 if there's a 1, else it's going to, if there's a 2 at, at, for data, it's going to go to state 0. Um, and it, this isn't used in state 3, so it's not going to go any, there's no state 3 condition. Um, and then you can see we're outputting um, that we're in state, okay, so what I did here is I accidentally, I didn't, I added D last, D is actually the most significant bit that's a little confusing but this is actually telling me I'm in state 1 imagine if D was above A that, that's where it really is supposed to be so it's telling me I'm in state 1 um, then in state 2 it, it's outputting state 2 imagine once again D out is actually really up there it's, it's as if why don't we just do it like this Control X. it's like it's really like that but I, I had to add that last minute because I didn't realize how many states I was going to need. And so I put it down there. And the name makes it a little off because I didn't know what to put before A. But anyway, that's how all these states transition through. It says, if this is the input, then go to this state. Else, if it's this, if it's this input, go to this other state. And then the state determines the output. So you can see this is segment DE for state 3, segment EF for state 4, FA, EG, AB, GC. And then, last but not least, BG. Then at the end of the code is the end case, so we're done in this case statement. Then the end process, which is this case statement, is in. And then the template, ending the template, which is what I created here, because this is a template architecture. And that's how the code works. Um, yeah, so next up will be a video of it running on the actual FPGA board. And so here, these two switches are our X. This switch over here is our enable, and this is our reset here. So once I flick my enable, you'll see that the L the seven segs start doing the eight figure eight on zero zero. That's because I used else if statements there, so it didn't really check for a condition. But it also works when both of them are up like that. And here's my reset, bringing it right back to state zero every time, which is A B. Now let's check what happens when we put in just one. And now let's check what happens when we put in two. And there it is. You can see that, and then here's our enable controls whether it's working or not working. Thank you for watching.